Oh my god! Hi guys, it's your friendly garage hood Sarah here. Does that work? Is there such thing as a garage hood? No? If you missed part one of this video, I highly suggest watching it on the link up above this, this corner, I think. <laughs> It'll get you caught up to where we are right now and it's really important. If you haven't seen it yet, you should probably watch that. Anyway, it's part two of the big break install on Project Teeter. <laughs> I almost screwed that up. Teeter Tot. Wow, I'm just starting off with a bang today. The new wheel spacers have arrived and they are definitely thick, girthy. Where we left off was that I had to get wheel spacers for the front of the car and I calculated down to a 17 millimeter spacer would give me the correct amount of spacing from the caliper to the back of the rim while still keeping the wheel poke to a bare minimum. Yeah, buddy, look at that. Plenty of clearance in there now. Now it's time to paint these rear calipers. So I decided it'd be smarter if I just pull the calipers off the car instead of trying to paint them while they're on the car because that's just kind of like sloppy. Ooh, that came out hard. I need to pull off this little tabby doodle. Popped off the spring that goes here. I took off the little clipper doodle that goes right there. This little ball right here, I need to free that from this clevis or something, whatever it's called. There we go. Bag to collect the fluid. Ta-da! Catch all this fluid. Just let that collect right there. I'm gonna replace this fluid anyway. So now this one's done. The other side's done too. I didn't wanna bore you with having to do this twice. I don't know how I pulled that off in the dark, but I did. And now it's dark out. So it looks like I'm gonna have to mix up the paint, do the calipers first thing in the morning. That's about as clean as I'm gonna get these things. This is gonna be really interesting, trying to mix this paint, and I'm doing it in my garage. Uh, what I'm gonna do, because this is spray paint, I'm gonna spray the spray paint in this Tupperware because I don't ever use these size Tupperwares. I don't know, like you could put like three pieces of broccoli in this, and it's pretty much pointless. So I'm gonna stick it inside the bag, and I'm going to spray the can inside the bag so that way any of the, like, the paint fumes and stuff stay inside here and the particles don't wander and stick to something they're not supposed to. And then once I get enough built up in here, I'm gonna mix it with this shade of green and I'm gonna lighten it with a little bit of white so that way I can kind of blend something close to these rear, or to the front brake calipers. I know it won't be perfect, but as long as I get pretty damn close, I'll be happy. I'm gonna turn my space heater off so I don't blow up. I think that's pretty close to being on point. I think maybe a touch more white. Just a tiny bit more white. I'm almost there though, almost. I might just roll with this after. It's 
not perfect, but it's good. And then here's my caliper brackets that I painted black and mount these guys. Happy 2019, everybody. Look, it's snowing in the desert. This is crazy. I mean, it's happened twice since I've lived here in Tucson, but it snowed in the desert, in the place that gets like 120 degrees. I know this has nothing to do with the video, but it's just really exciting, and it made me happy to wake up to snow. I miss snow since I grew up in New England, and now I live in the desert. You don't ever see this stuff that much anymore. enough for being spray paint that I brushed on. I mean, that's close enough. Cue the work music. Time for me to put in my first work of 2019. I have like a cheerleader spirit. I just want to like cheer, like go break parts. <laughs> Install now. <laughs> This is dumb. The way Audi designed it is you have to compress and twist the pot at the same time to compress it. So you need a special tool basically to do this. And I kind of like made a special tool with my bench vise that is more of like a wobbly floor vise because I don't have room for a bench in my garage. What I'm doing is I'm turning the pot with my vise grips. And as I turn the pot with the vise grips, I tighten down on the C-clamp and then turn again with vice grips and then again with the seat clamp and I go back and forth and it slowly is compressing the pot back into the caliper. Super dumb setup why you have to do that like twist and compress at the same time. I gotta torque these, don't wanna get them too tight. So this is the original midline on the TT. It's not a rear brake line because it actually goes right here. It's hard line from here all the way up to the caliper. So they call it a midline, and I got a new one right here. I had to lay down for a second. I started getting like really lightheaded. I don't know why. So I'm just laying down. <laughs> Low key, it's super lonely in my garage. I've been here by myself all day yesterday and all day today. New Year's Eve and New Year's Day by myself in the garage. Tight quarters. There is the finished product. What do you guys think? I think that color is close enough. It's a little bit darker, but I don't really think you'll be able to tell unless you really look. Time to bleed the brakes. The way the ABS is designed on the TT, I have to bleed the brakes in a non-traditional order, starting at the closest to the brake master cylinder, working my way the furthest from the brake master cylinder. I know despite me just reading that out of my Bentley service manual, somebody's gonna comment and say, you bled the brakes in the wrong order. You're supposed to start with the furthest brake away from the brake master cylinder. So, I am re-emphasizing this. According to my tech data, the way the ABS is designed on this car, you have to do the opposite of what is common sense. The thing that's making me a little bit nervous though is it's saying right here, it says, warning, the ABS system uses electronic controls, a sophisticated hydraulic unit. Once air enters the hydraulic unit, it cannot be removed using traditional bleeding methods. For this reason, pressure bleed the brakes using this guy. So, 
there is 100% definitely air in the system because I was draining the system completely to get all the old fluid out so I could put fresh fluid in there. When flushing brake fluid from the system, use extreme care not to let the brake fluid reservoir run dry. If air enters the hydraulic unit, the Audi service tester must be used to bleed the brake system before the vehicle can be driven. I don't have to use the Audi specific one that this Bentley service manual is saying I need. I think that's just engineers trying to scare mechanics. So I just gotta find someone that has a pressure bleeder and I should be able to get the air that's trapped in the system out of here. Hello. <laughs> that was just dumb. So it's like, what, the third day, fourth day in this video? I don't know how many days it's been in this video. I was going to just end the video off last night where I got to the point that I couldn't bleed the brakes on this car. I just went and borrowed a pressure bleeder from my friend Phil that owns the Audi S4 parts place here in Tucson. So his info is down below. I'm giving him a shout out because he's like the man when it comes to hooking me up with Audi stuff. I cleaned the pressure bleeder out with some rubbing alcohol so there's no contamination from other fluids. So it's nice and clean now. So the fluid I'm gonna use is this Pentosin Dot 4 LV. Now I know some of you are gonna say you should be using the Super Dot 4 since this is a 2001. However, because that is ABS and ESP, I am gonna use the LV formula and just flush out whatever was in there. I had green brake break fluid, brake fluid, <laughs> brake fluid that was in there before. Make sure I pump this up to 10. Well that sucked. <laughs> I didn't have the cap on tight enough, I guess. It made a huge mess underneath here, but I cleaned it up. I think it's tight now. I used a filter wrench and I gave it hell, so it's about as tight as I can get at least. Good. Ooh, there we go. Nice steady stream of it. Needless to say, this is really hard to film and do this at the same time. I'm not even paying attention to my camera because I'm like, brake fluid eats away at paint. So I don't really care about the camera right now. So hopefully I capture enough, enough of this. <laughs> I've gotten most of that fluid out. I can tell because the stuff that was in there was green and this new stuff is like a clear yellow. Nice, clear, steady stream. It looks pretty good. There's no more air bubbles. Oh yeah. Yep. Crack. Oh yeah, that's perfect. halfway through I probably would have been done quite a bit earlier you guys aren't gonna be able to see anything <sighs> so it's almost nine o'clock at night it's pitch black out and uh, I I haven't eaten dinner yet you guys see the ABS light is on that's because my longitudinal sensor is out of adjustment and I have a new one that I got from the junkyard I just haven't installed it yet so don't worry about the ABS light let's try it from 30 miles per hour see if this thing stops Oh, oh, yes, it does stop. I barely even got on to it. Dude, this is a huge difference. Oh my God. Oh my God. I'm in a t-shirt and it's 35 degrees outside. I'm freezing. But I just want to let you guys know, the brakes do work and they are we're gonna do a full test of this in another video. I'm just sorry, it's like nine o'clock at night and I have to get this edited first thing in the morning for you guys. So we will do another video on 
the big brakes, but it's gonna be like the actual test of them. I'm gonna get back in my car because it's freezing. I'm gonna get back to my house and eat and go to sleep. And I'll edit this. And I'll see you guys soon with another video. Bye. Ba-da-da-da-da-da <laughs>